Hello and congratulations on your purchase from the range of exciting modern Eurogem steam cleaners. Appliances from the Eurogem range of world's best cleaning products will not only save you time and money, create a healthier home and produce better cleaning results, they will also give you the satisfaction of knowing you are no longer contributing to the chemical degradation of this wonderful planet we share. Due to the similarity of use of the TR6 and TR5, we will combine their description in the one segment. By now you would have read the user's manual and please have it on hand for reference as we go through the various applications and uses of the TR6 and TR5 and take particular notice of the safety precautions. Prior to starting though, it is important to reiterate a basic principle of steam cleaning. Steam is used to melt and break down the grease and oil that bind dirt and stains onto or into surfaces. The intense pressure then blows everything away. Therefore, as you see, this is not an abrasive method of cleaning. In fact, heavy rubbing will only cause the brushes to break down in a very short time. How fast you can clean is totally dependent on the amount of buildup of dirt. The more buildup, the slower you go to allow the heat to soften the soiling. Advice on particularly stubborn staining is given in the specialty cleaning section. Now let's get the machine started. First step is to fill the boiler, reservoir, with water, keeping in mind a golden rule of steamers. Never put anything into the boiler or reservoir except pure water. Distilled or demineralized is recommended. The only exception to this rule is when we descale the appliance, which I will cover later. The TR5 has a pressure cap direct to the boiler, as opposed to the TR6, which has a loose cap accessing the reservoir, which feeds the boiler. At the rear top of the appliance is the access cap to the reservoir or boiler. Remove this cap and fill with water. The pressure cap on the TR5 must not be opened while pressurized or hot. If the machine has been used or turned on, make sure the boiler is depressurized before opening. To, to depressurize the TR5, turn off the main power switch and press the steam trigger to release the pressure. Always open slowly. Never leave the cap off as foreign objects can damage the boiler. On top of the TR6 and TR5 you will see the main on off switch which you now turn on. The red switch will light up. You are now heating the boiler. At this point you may hear a humming sound from the TR6 which is the water being injected from the reservoir to the boiler which is normal and will also occur as you're using the machine. The orange steam light on the top of the machine will light when the boiler is at the correct temperature and pressure to give you optimum cleaning power. This light also will go on and off as you use the appliance and this indicates the boiler is maintaining the heat and pressure and this also is normal. You can adjust the steam pressure by turning the pressure knob clockwise. The second light to the left of the steam light is the water out indicator. This will light when the reservoir is out of water. Remember, you can top up this reservoir at any time during cleaning with the TR6 and for continuous steam, you should do so approximately every 20 minutes. The TR6 has an audible beep when the reservoir is out of water. To stop this beep, you need to turn off the machine at the main power switch, refill the reservoir or boiler and restart your appliance. Once the appliance is at operational temperature and pressure, you are ready for some serious and healthy cleaning. However, before we progress, it is important to understand the difference between the various accessories. The large heads for general cleaning and windows are your maintenance accessories for regular cleaning of light soiling. They are not powerful enough due to the wide dispersion of steam for stain removal. Stain removal is achieved by concentrated steam pressure. The most intense pressure is achieved with the single aperture nozzle. You then move to the medium triangular head for medium soiling and cleaning then your large heads for maintenance cleaning. Once you grasp this principle of steam cleaning, you will find the various uses much easier to understand and you will be able to adapt your cleaning to virtually any situation. Now let's get your home cleaned and sanitised the natural way. The main hose or flexible tube fits into the socket at the front of the unit. Make sure you hear an audible click as you fit the hose to ensure proper connection. It is important to treat this hose with some respect. It should not be used to drag the machine around, nor should it be jerked or twisted excessively. The accessories can fit directly to the main hose nozzle, or to one or both of the extension tubes, depending on the task at hand. Our most common cleaning task is the floor, so let's start with grout on tiled floors. 
To the main hose handle, we fit our extension tubes. Push each tube on so the press button locking device is in the correct position. We now attach the single aperture nozzle and the small nylon brush. The TR6 and the TR5 have trigger mechanisms on the main handle to control steam production. So we now press the trigger for steam and allow the nylon brush to move slowly over the grout line, touching the surface under hand pressure. You don't need to apply heavy pressure. Remember, if the stain is a bit stubborn, just dwell on it for longer. Grout cleaned, you now attach the large head or rectangular brush to our extensions, and to this we attach a double layer of toweling or microfiber cloth using the alligator clips on the head. Working backwards, move at a steady pace to allow the steam to clean and sanitize. You will note that because we are only using a low moisture steam application through the cloth, the tiles will dry very quickly. How easy is that? To remove spot stains from carpet, we fit the single aperture steam nozzle directly onto the main handle. Remember this is our most intense cleaning tool. We adjust the steam pressure to a low setting as high pressure is not needed and can unravel some carpet fibres. Then aim the nozzle across the stain, placing a cloth behind the stain to catch the dirt and blast the dirt off the pole and onto the cloth. Never aim the nozzle down at the stain as you are just pushing the dirt deeper into the carpet. Certain stains that actually change or dye the colour of the pile, or really tough stains that resist the steam, may be pre-treated with specific stain removers to assist with the cleaning. Okay, now we want to clean our stainless steel hood, our cupboard doors, our bench tops, or maybe our fridge exterior. Attach the main head directly to the main hose handle. If you need to reach high spots, you can use one or two extension tubes. Attach a cleaning cloth, either toweling or microfiber, making sure it is clean and grease free. Remember even new cloths need to be washed before use to eliminate any residual grease or oil from manufacture. Squeeze the steam trigger and rub the head over the area to be clean. You will see the dirt and grease transferred to the cloth. When the cloth becomes soil, replace with a clean one and continue to clean. How often you swap the cloth depends on the amount of dirt on the surface you are cleaning. With stainless steel, it is a good idea to give a final wipe over with a very clean cloth, as even tiny marks show on the surface. The cloths can be washed and reused. This method can also be used for cleaning delicate materials on furniture, but always make sure you test these materials with steam in an unsighted area and allow to dry before proceeding to ensure colour fastness. Velveteen and microfiber are material types that don't respond well to direct steam application and you must always use a cloth and low steam level when cleaning. The ability to clean without streaking also makes steam the cleaner of choice for another major cleaning task, windows and glass. We attach our large window cleaner directly to the main hose head. Keeping the window cleaner as flat as possible against the glass, we steam whilst pulling the rubber squeegee down the glass. Any build-up may be scrubbed with a squidgy, but keep in mind stains like paint splatter etc. need to be removed with a small single aperture nozzle. You then reverse the window cleaner and wipe away the residue with the second rubber squeegee. It pays to carry a chamois while you do the glass to wipe any small drips that may escape. Always start at the top and pull down vertically to the point where the head comes away from the surface, then on to the end of the glass. Come back and clean the lower section by moving horizontally across the glass. As with any surface, if there is a build-up of old chemical cleaners or heavy soiling, swap to the smaller nozzle or use a cloth cover over the window attachment and give the surface an intense clean prior to using the window cleaning head. Three areas that are definitely not receptive to steam cleaning are vertical blinds due to the use of plastic in the material itself, wire reinforced glass due to expansion of the wire from heat and possible glass cracks, and nylon pressed prefabricated cupboards as the heat causes a breakdown of the glue and lifting of the wrap. Always avoid these areas. Wooden surfaces, surfaces that are painted with water-based paints and leather are surfaces that need protection from direct steam and can only be cleaned with a lower steam pressure and through a double layer of soft cleaning cloth. After cleaning leather, you must immediately treat the leather with a conditioner to avoid drying and cracking. When we look to maintenance cleaning of the bathroom, we treat the floors as already discussed. We use the window cleaner for our shower screens and the large brush for the tiled walls. We use the single aperture nozzle with the nylon brush to do around the basin top and in particular around the base of taps where dirt accumulates and becomes a major problem over time. 
错